My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. What's going on, man? My name is Angel Diaz. I'm the CEO of Alphasthetics Competitors. We are a personal training gym. We offer personal training basically to meet uh, any results for strength training, weight loss. I myself am a dietitian, and uh, my goal ever since I started the brand was really just to uh, come up with not just your ordinary gym, but more a gym that's more private to really help and focus on clients to help reach those goals that they personally have. Love it. So let me ask you a question. How much of the training part has to do with mindset because I see that from a lot of different coaches or I hear that from a lot of the different coaches that they tell me it's it's got the physical aspect, but the mindset is also very important. So kind of give us a little bit of an idea on that side. And you know what? I actually love that question because I really feel that the mindset is the most important aspect of it all. Uh, rather than I always tell my clients, rather than something so more so motivation, um, you know, a lot of the time people are really motivated to start something new, but I always tell actually all my clients, I don't really like to use motivation myself. I like to develop more mindset, more something where you can be consistent with it. I see a lot of your posts too, and I love them because, you know, you always talk about self-discipline, being consistent, and that's really the biggest key in anything, not just fitness. And that's why me personally, I chose fitness as a career, because fitness teaches you everything. If you really think about it, when you're starting a workout program, it's going to teach you how to be disciplined. You have to be disciplined in both the gym and your foods. You got to be consistent with it, and it's going to be a lot of time consuming. It's a lot of sacrifice you have to make. Likewise, in anything, you take business, for example, a lot of time, a lot of consistency, a lot of efforts that you got to do, and you got to sacrifice a lot of giving up, going out, and you know, spending time with your friends. So, really, more than anything, I always tell everyone when they sign up on a program, this is a lifestyle change. This we're gonna, you know, coach you both physically and mentally. So that's really the biggest aspect of it all. I would say, really, the mental. Love it, love it. So here's my question. Where do you get your self-development from and what do you do for it? Because you're running a business and you're helping other people get their mindset right. So where are you getting your source? What are you doing for yourself? So I would say what I'm doing for myself is actually 10 years ago, um, I, was, I was in high school. I'm actually uh, 25 right now. So 10 years ago, I was in high school. One of my teachers asked me to write a letter to myself. And this is really powerful. Someone is really good to write a letter to yourself to the future you. Because, you know, my old teacher did that to me. And I wrote a letter to myself. And it's basically where you see yourself in 10 years and what motivates you to get there. And, you know, it really got me thinking. I took some time to write that letter. And I said, you know, what really motivates me is, is helping others. Backtracking that a little bit more is I actually started off uh, when I was young. I was actually pre-diabetic. And, um, you know, I was very... Um, Really for me, is I was just self-conscious. I, I wasn't the outgoing person I am today. I was very shy. You know, you always get bullied through your way and things like that. And um, I saw, long story short, I saw a dietitian. They kind of helped change my life. I lost a lot of weight six months. With, only six months, I was down 60 pounds. Um, I was working really hard. And that, I, I loved it. You know, it changed my life. It changed my whole outlook on everything. And I said, you know what? Just how that dietitian helped me change my life. And, you know, I'm so encouraged, I'm so motivated to, to always just do more, you know, I, I want to do the same for others. So really just what satisfies me is seeing, taking somebody from point A, you know, for seeing them where they're, you know, suffering, where they're, you know, not motivated, where there's no self-motivation, and just, you know, helping them, help give them that motivation, help give them that hope, and rationing with them, you know, show them, hey, I've been where you're at. You know, I can really sympathize with that person because I know exactly where you're at, but, you know, if we do this, you know, if we make a life transformation, your life will change forever. So really what motivates me is just really seeing others succeed because I know what it feels like. And I've been through exactly, you know, that beginning point where everybody's been. Everybody has a beginning and the beginning is definitely always tough. So, you know, long story short, what motivates me is just always looking at that letter. And in that letter, I said, I want to become a personal trainer. I want to have my own gym someday later on in the road. I literally had no game plan. I said, I want to become a trainer. And I want to become, you know, have my own gym. If that teacher would have looked at me dead in the eyes and said, hey, Angel, in 10 years you're going to have your own gym, I would have been like, you know, you're, that's crazy. There's no way. And now I'm in downtown Dallas. I got my gym located in downtown Dallas. And, um, you know, it's, it's actually, we've grown. I started in a small location in Mesquite, moved into Dallas, and now we're in downtown Dallas. It's actually the third gym that I've had within uh, two years. So, you know, all has been going really good. Because, um, again, what I do is I do everything out of passion. And for me, I think that if you, have, if you actually take a career that you truly have a passion for, you'll be able to overcome any obstacle that life throws your way. Good for you. Good for you. So here's my other question for you. 
what do you where do you see people f- i don't i i don't want to talk about the positive side only i want to talk about the the not so positive where do you see people fall off the track what are the common common the common denominator among the people that don't stick to the program what are the pitfalls because i i'm always interested to see what, what what's going on in that realm because a lot of the fitness trainers coaches mentors they always highlight all the positive stuff and i feel like you don't have to tell me the positive stuff because a picture is worth a thousand words like you show me the before and after i got you this shit works talk to me about this part and i actually love that you know that that goes back to what i started with and the reason i started with this because you know i figured we'd be talking about the downfall and that's the key word and you know a lot of people may disagree agree to disagree um that's motivation right i feel like a lot of the times people when they go into not just my gym but any gym they show up and they're super motivated they're ready to get to work but like, man i'm going to do whatever it takes you know to reach this goal you said you're going to sign on a 12-week program i'm motivated today let's hit it really hard today i'm ready let's do it i'm going to sign up for five times a week i always tell my clients hold on a minute don't just tell me you're going to sign up for five times a week i want you to really think about what you're telling me five times a week is five hours a week you're going to come to the gym you're going to meet with me for one hour you got to take in mind the drive you're going to do here you know whenever you get off of work you're going to be tired so don't just tell me five times a week because you're motivated right now because i had so many people that tell me five times a week What do they do? They do one week, they start to get unmotivated. Hey, Angel, I can't make it in because I got off of work late. I'm really tired. Hey, Angel, my body's really sore. I think I'm going to take a rest day. Wait, hold on, Joe. We signed up, you know, two weeks ago, and we signed up for five times a week. Two weeks ago, that's 10 sessions. Out of those 10 sessions, you've only used four sessions. You told me you were really motivated to get started. So that goes back down to motivation. I don't care how motivated you are. I told all my clients this, and I love to use this metaphor. When you wake up in the morning, are you motivated to brush your teeth? Of course you're not. But you do it. Why? You know it's a habit. It's a routine. You do it because you do it. You get up in the morning. I don't get up in the morning. I'm like, oh, man, I'm ready to brush my teeth. I'm excited. No. I get up in the morning. I go into the bathroom. I brush my teeth because it's part of my routine. It's just a habit that I've built and I've developed. The same thing goes into the gym. People fall off all the time because they get unmotivated. You put them on a super strict program, they're going to fall off. If they've, if they've been used to sitting in an office job all day, You mean they come into the gym for one hour and you kill them in that hour? Man, I don't care how motivated they are. They're going to think that, oh, I hit one workout a week, so uh, that's it. That's good enough to meet my results. I tell everyone, it's better to work out three to five times a week, a decent workout, than to work out once or twice a week, a super intense workout. Why? Because you're, you're being more consistent, right? The more times you're, 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 you're hitting that muscle group, you're breaking down your muscle fibers more, it's going to cause those muscle fibers to what? It's going to cause them to heal and repair. So the more you're breaking them down, the more time it's going to take to heal and repair it. That's when you're going to start to see results. Not just in the gym, in business too. You know, I can tell you from my business experience, you know, starting off and, and you know, opening up my own gym. I went to, uh, I was actually taking business classes at a community college. Finished off my, uh, my associates. I was transferring over to uh, UTD uh, to get a, uh, they got a doctorate program in business. I said, hey, this is really good. Let me do this. And during that process, the opportunity to, uh, to open up my own gym came apart. Uh, I was working with a real estate agent. She said, hey, Andrew, I found this really good spot for you. It's not too expensive. It's a really good start. So I said, you know, to invest in college or to invest in what I've already been doing. You know, I've been personal training now for since high school. So, you know, I've joined the football team starting there. So I have 10 years of experience in personal training. So I said, you know what? Let me just go on ahead and, you know, put school aside. And I've got my associates. Let's take on the business side of it now. I was like, you know, it's something I always wanted to do. Plus, I'm going to school not to work for a corporate company. I'm going to school for entrepreneurship. So why not just, you know, take the action today and open up my own gym? And I think that one of the things that held me back a lot, though, if I'm being honest, is if you're young. You're young you know? I feel like a lot of the times young people don't feel like they've got what it takes because of age. You, know, you see a lot of entrepreneurs. You're like, man, you know, these guys are 30s, 40s, 50s. You know, I'm 20. You know, not a lot of people are going to take you serious. And I feel like that's an aspect where a lot of people fail. You know, you, you start to sell yourself short. You're like, oh, because my age, I'm going to sell myself short. You know, I tell everyone, if I would have done the same thing, you know, three years down the road, I wouldn't have the gym I have right now. Who knows where I'd be? So I feel like every opportunity that comes your way, you got to jump on it, especially if it's something that you've been ready for and you're ready to jump on it and you're ready to take it. Definitely do it. And not just be motivated by it, but be consistent. Be ready to, to struggle because there is going to be a struggle. Right now, COVID-19 is a big thing, especially in the gym industry. 
you know, COVID-19 hit and, you know, I saw so many close personal friends that have their own gyms too. And, you know, a lot of them followed bankruptcy. Some of them lost their uh, gyms. I know you're familiar with Ghost Gym, right? They're a huge franchise. They will follow bankruptcy. And, you know, it, it really puts you to think like, man, you know, what can I do to not fall down and fall in bankruptcy, right? There's going to be struggles. There's going to be challenges. But if you truly love it, you got to just push through and improvise. Okay, let's do online training. Let's do online classes. You know, whenever all this happened, I wasn't even charging clients. I had, I created a Facebook group, a Facebook page, and I said, you know what? My clients always give so much to me. Let's create a Facebook page, a Facebook group, to where I'm going to give free workouts, not charging anything to my clients, to my people. You're creating value. You're giving back to your people. You're showing appreciation. You may not get anything then, but once all this COVID-19 stuff passes by, what is the people going to do? They're going to thank those businesses that gave them during such a hard time. Man, I had people reach out to me and say, you know what, man, you know, we'll just – Donate you money, you know, we'll give you money. Um, hey, can you do mobile home training? Come to our home and train us. We'll still pay you the same amount. You know, we really appreciate everything you're doing. We want to see you to continue to succeed. And that's something that I didn't ask anybody. But, you know, because you're giving to them and they see the will that you're willing to do to be there for them is they're always going to be there for you. So I think in life, there's always going to be challenges. But you just got to be ready for those challenges. And you got to improvise. You know, you, you always got to be ready to improvise. And you always got to be ready to... To, to have a backup plan for your business. So that's really the I agree with that 100%. You brought up a good point that the consistency and the discipline that you said, I feel like it's the same shit in business. If you're not doing it consistently, if you're not marketing, you're not servicing the customers, you're not innovating, you're not coming up with better ways of serving, like all of the stuff that you just talked about, it's literally the fundamentals of business. That's business what it's got to be. Business one on one. Now, here's the difference. Here's the difference. The guy who teaches a business class or in a business school may not have gone through the experience that you have gone. I mean, I've got the same background, but we're talking about you. Like, you have gone through that, right? So I feel like having the hands on experience and gone through it, it's more important than sitting in a classroom and talking about somebody else going through it. Because even though, even though that you just talked about it, I feel it. I can kind of picture it, kind of see it. But at the end of the day, it's not the same shit. You went through it. That muscle, ex that muscle memory that you have going through the business is different than me just thinking about it or hearing about it, internalizing it, trying to get that muscle memory. That ain't going to work. So to me, it's like the guy who's filed for bankruptcy two, three times, I respect that guy. I respect, because he's gone through it two, three times. He knows. Now, people shouldn't be stupid to do the same mistake over and over. But you want to know something? He's got memory muscle. He, he knows what it takes. And under pressure, it's, it's, it's being on top of your toes. I mean, you know the stuff. Yeah, and, you know, it's really, really, you know, and that's what I feel like where I can really, you know, relate to a lot of people, um, especially when they're starting off a business. Whenever I start off a business, again, I just had an associate's right in business, which is really minor, right, just your basic courses. So I really had, only kind of experience that I did have in business is, you know, thankfully I was working for a commercial gym. Whenever I got into personal training right after high school, I was certified. Uh, I'm also a licensed nutritionist. So I landed a job at a commercial gym. Uh, literally, my first day at that gym, on the interview process, I asked the manager that, I said, hey, what does it take for you to become a fitness manager? They looked at me and they laughed and they said, man, you know, you're barely, you're barely applying for a personal trainer. Do you, you really ask this question already? I said, yeah. And they said, well, it takes a lot of work. And I said, well, I'm ready to put in the work. And they said, well, you know, there's a lot of people, you know, that want that position. I said, I don't, wor I don't worry about my competition. I worry about myself. And I know that I'm ready to work and I'll shine anybody else who's going to put in that work. Because it's something that I had a passion for, something that I love. Let me tell you, I was the youngest manager in the company ever not only that i worked the least amount of hours and i was a top seller in tech all the reason of texas three months consecutive straight within three four months i became fitness manager oversaw my own club um and i was there for about two three years and that's where i got a lot of my experience from on how to manage a gym now during that process is whenever i was actually going to school too um i was going to school and i was working manager hours i was working you know 60 hours, going to school, um, sleeping three, two hours a night sometimes. You know, getting home, um, do, 
doing my homework, staying up until 4 or 5 a.m., waking up by 7, going to classes in the morning, and going into work. And, and, you know, there was nights when I wouldn't sleep. You know, I would literally take naps throughout the day whenever I could. But I knew that it's something that I wanted to do, and nothing was going to hold me back. So, you know, I can really tell. A lot of the times people see me, you know, they see me young. Um, you know, they, they, they see that I've got my, my business here. And a lot of the time people think, oh, you've had it easy. You're not, you can't come in and tell anybody they've had it easy because you don't know their true story. You don't know what they've done to get to where they've gotten. And that's why I tell everybody, it doesn't matter what you do in life. You have to choose a career that you truly want. Find something you have a passion for. If you do something because of money, when things get hard, nine out of ten times you're going to give up. That money isn't going to be the motivator. Because you ask me what motivates me, and that's seeing people's success. Right? Seeing people come to me, Angel, you know what? Thank you so much for helping me transform my life. That's what keeps me going. So I tell anybody and everybody watching is, you know, when, when you're trying to find and chase after anything, don't go for business. You know, don't look at my success. Don't look at, you know, a lawyer. Don't look at a doctor and just say, man, you know, I, I want to have what he has. No, you know, say, I want to do something. I want to live the rest of my life and feel like I'm not even working, right? Like what the saying goes, right? When you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. And I can definitely vouch for that. I'm here at my gym. People ask me, Angel, what are your hours at the gym? Uh, man, I'm here from um, 10 to 12, 1 in the morning, literally. Like, wait a second, so you're there over 12 hours a day? I'm like, yeah, they're like, how do you work so much? Well, it's not really work. I love it. I'm here by it. You know, I'm literally at the office. I literally leave here from my office, clean up the gym and everything, run my reports at 1 a.m. Well, last night I made it home at 2 a.m. I had a business meeting with a partner. Um, I made it home at 2 a.m. You know, and, you know. That's what it takes, Angel. Day, That's yeah. what it takes, man. That's called hustling. That's like going after your goals and dreams. So I, I, I get that all the time, man. I It was funny. I almost stopped myself the other day saying this out loud because I was worried about what they're going to say. And and this was the conversation. They're like, yeah, you know, Vaid, we should, you know, we're going to work hard this week, this, we're going to do this, blah, blah, blah. Saturday and Sunday, we're just going to chill and everything else. And it ended up being that Saturday and Sunday, I worked more than they did throughout the whole week. And I was thinking, I was like, I got a family, I got a wife, I got a daughter. They understand where I am. They know what I'm working on. And I'm like, are these the type of people that are going to get us to the promised land? Because if you already at the beginning of the week are thinking about the weekend, you're not hustling enough because your competitor is beating the shit out of you on the weekend. So whenever you win, you think that everybody else said, okay, you know what? Angel won. Let's all chill. The competitors are going to stop because you won and you got the success. No. When you celebrate, they're training. They're getting business done because they want to work your ass. So to me, it's like, not, listen, there's no nine to five in business. It's whatever it takes. That's whatever it. it takes. Simple. Long hours. That's the business fundamental. Dedication. I don't think they teach that in school. I don't think they teach that. Because if they would have taught that, a lot of people would not take business class or want to open a business. Because if a professor says that, that would be crazy. Nobody's going to say, oh, yeah, sign me up for this. It's crazy. So to me, it's like sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. I love it, Angel. So listen, one advice for entrepreneurs that are busy that may not get to go to gym as often as they like. What is your number one to supplement that? To try to get into, what is your suggestion? Uh, any advice, you know, to any entrepreneur is, like I told everyone during COVID nineteen, practice is time to eat healthy. You know, I always tell all my clients walking in the gym, nutrition is literally eighty percent of your results. You can never outwork a bad diet. I don't care how hard you train. So my advice to anybody wanting to get into health, you know, health industry is, and they want to better your physique, want to be healthier, eat healthy. You know, that's really the biggest key. Um, doing a morning circle. So whenever I was at the house, you know, I, I didn't come too much to my gym because, my, again, my gym is in downtown, so the COVID-19 really affects, especially this area, is I get up in the morning. It literally takes 15 minutes. So check this out. You get up in the morning. You do 100 jumping jacks. You do 100 push-ups. You do 100 crunches. You do um, 100 leg raises. And then, you know, you finish up with 100 seated dips. That's 500 reps that you just did. Within 15, 20 minutes. I guess someone might be more experienced. Someone who's not experienced within 20 to 30 minutes, you knock that out. As soon as you get up in the morning, find a quick circuit. Again, you know, push-ups, 
are good for the chest, good for the triceps. You're activating shoulders too. You keep your core tight. You're also engaging core work. You do jumping jacks, really good cardio activity, right? You're working out your heart. You're burning more calories, getting your heart rate elevated. Crunches, you're working out the abdominals. Seated dips, you're working out the triceps. Bicycles, you're working out your core again. So you, pretty, you practically did a full body. Um, That's complete right there, man. That's complete right there. All within 20 There's minutes. a whole entire workout. Throw in some legs, you know, throw in some jump squats, you know, throw in some squats. There's always something you can do. Anything. You just have to be active. That's really it. Um, and everybody I love has it. to have I love um, it. Wait, Angel, I want to thank you. How do people find you? Angel, how do people find you? So people can actually find me. Uh, they can go to my website. A lot of people find me. They send inquiries there. Uh, the website is www.alphastheticcompetitors.com. And that's also on my uh, on the on the Instagram, AD Alphastetics. I saw it. Listen, thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule and being with us this morning. Hopefully you're staying safe. Uh, we'll keep in touch, brother. Hey, likewise, man. Thanks so much for giving us this opportunity. You guys take care and have a great one. You too. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.